All right, so still riding the Godzilla train. And uh, now we're getting back into ones that are a little bit higher quality with the 1974 Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. So this one toned down a lot of the campiness and it was trying to make it a bit more serious. And despite some strangeness again, with Toho sci-fi always goes weird sci-fi, they still do definitely bring the tone back to at least early Showa series. Alright, so Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. So, it starts off with an Okinawan prophecy, uh, essentially a doomsday one, but saying that uh, some monsters will rot, and then when the sun rises in the west instead of the east, uh, second, and then uh, and two monsters will arise to stop a great evil. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, so, uh, and do we, so they are uncovering a, essentially a, an archaeological dig finds a statue which seems tied in with his prophecy. It's kind of a Shisa statue. A Shisa is like a lion dog from Japanese mythology. I don't know too much about Shisas overall, but uh, they're very important to Okinawa. Now. So, Godzilla suddenly appears, but he's acting a little strange, and because uh, at this point Godzilla is well known more as a protective monster in this continuity, seems to be trashing the city. Angiris, who has been a known ally of Godzilla, and they actually straight up call him his friend, appears and tries to, well, attack Godzilla, which is strange, and Godzilla breaks his jaw and sends him packing. Then, during one of the rampages, when Godzilla appears to stop Godzilla, it is revealed that one of them is a mechanical duplicate, a Mecha Godzilla. However, Godzilla is trounced by his robotic duplicate, who is pretty much a walking arsenal, launching lasers, missiles, lightning, bullets. This thing is just, uh... Essentially, this thing is a gun in Godzilla form. It is an obscene weapon. So, uh, Godzilla is, uh, recuperating while got Mechagodzilla, well, is doing his thing. Meanwhile, a bunch of humans are trying to protect that statue to try to trigger the prophecy, essentially. However, some strange people keep trying to, well, take it. However, another mysterious person keeps arriving to try to save it, who is essentially Interpol. But, uh, it turns out that's the, uh, the people who are acting strange, as well as, uh, are a group of aliens from the third planet of the Black Hole, which look like green-skinned monkeys. So we got the Planet of the Apes meets Godzilla. Okay. Meanwhile, the Interval guy just keeps showing up to just save them from uh, monkeys. So yeah, it still has that Toho strangeness to it. But overall, the story itself works very well. And this introduces the new, a new monster, King Shisa, or the dub usually refers to him as King Caesar. A giant Shisa that essentially could absorb uh, la uh, la essentially lasers into one of his eyes and fire them back out, so he's the perfect counter for Mechagodzilla's technicolor light show. But the two of them, uh, Godzilla and uh, Shisa, team up to essentially beat the tin out of the can and tear off Mechagodzilla's head, destroying it. And that seems to be the end. Or is it? As this one does have a direct sequel coming up uh, in my next review, but uh, we'll get to that one well, then. So, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. This one, it's a fine example. It introduces one of Godzilla's most deadly nemesis, the Mechagodzilla, one that will be rebooted uh, several times after this. But uh, overall, this is a the. The kaiju fights are good, even if a lot of Mechagodzilla is just standing there like this, shooting. So sometimes those scenes can drag on with like, yes, we, we get it, he's still shooting, he's still shooting. We can move on along a little here. But overall, it's still... The fights themselves are still pretty well, especially once King Shisa gets involved in things. So, and with a cameo from Angiris, I'm always a fan of Angiris. So, I'm going to give this one like a six MacGuffins. 
It's not the greatest, but I actually do prefer the sequel a little bit more. But this one does work. And is definitely one of the better put together ones, in, especially towards the tail end here of the Showa series. Uh, I think that's really all I got on here. Uh, the effects are still dated Toho effects, but so the laser light show, dated as heck, especially with Mechagonzola, but the creature suits themselves, very good. Did still suffer that if you're watching it on Blu-ray, it is too crystal clear, so you're definitely seeing a little of the wires a lot more, but, well, they were not visible on the VHSs, I will say. Okay, uh, I think that's all I got on this one, so see you soon, Void, and uh, take care.